Hey everyone, so today I wanted to answer some questions about the 14th Amendment, Section 3. So first of all, what is the 14th Amendment, Section 3? It's an amendment in the United States Constitution that was ratified on July 9th, 1868 in Congress. It's basically a stopgap that says if someone took an oath to the United States Constitution and then committed acts of treason, by trying to overthrow the United States government by insurrection, rebellion, or giving aid and comfort to the enemy, then that person is longer eligible to run or hold any civil or military office in the United States. The 14th Amendment, Section 3 states, No person shall be a senator or representative in the Congress or elector that can't run for office of the president and vice president or hold any office civil or military on the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or an officer, meaning executive judicial, of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid and comfort to the enemies thereof, but Congress may vote of two-thirds of each house to remove such disability. So why is the 14th Amendment Section 3 being used to remove Donald Trump from the presidential ballot? It's because Donald Trump is not eligible to run or hold any civil or military office, including the office of the President of the United States, based on his own actions. He tried to defranchise you, you, the voters, by trying to overturn the election results by organizing and then leading an insurrection. He then gave aid and comfort to the enemy, the people that just attacked the Capitol, by telling them that he loves them and he knows how they feel. Recently, he said he would pardon them and even went so far as calling them hostages, which they are not. He also said he'll get rid of the Constitution if re-elected. In 2016, Donald Trump said he will not accept any election. He does not win. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make a major announcement today. I would like to promise and pledge to all of my voters and supporters and to all of the people of the United States that I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. What is an insurrection? An insurrection is a violent uprising against an authority or government. How did Donald Trump engage in insurrection? Well, before the election, months before the election, he told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. He told everyone the election was rigged before he even knew the election results. After the election took place, he said the election was stolen, and he started calling it Stop the Steal. He called states like Georgia and asked him, asked them to find him votes. He had fake electors sent to the U.S. Capitol with fake pick papers, and they were going to try to change those papers, those votes. He told his supporters to come to the Capitol on January 6th because it's going to be wild. He stood near the U.S. Capitol and told his supporters the election was stolen and to march to the Capitol. He said, if you don't fight like hell, you won't have a country. Then he watched his own supporters attack the U.S. Capitol from the White House and did nothing to stop it. These are just some of the ways Donald Trump engaged in insurrection. How did Donald Trump give aid and comfort to the enemy? Well, right after the U.S. Capitol was attacked, on January 6th, Donald Trump walked out onto the White House lawn and told his individuals that just attacked the U.S. Capitol that he loves them, he knows how they feel. He calls them hostages today, and he said he will pardon them if he gets back in. Does Donald Trump need to be convicted of a crime before the 14th Amendment can be enforced? No, because it's disqualifying him from running or holding any office. It's not trying him, it's not removing his freedom is what a court of law does. It's like if someone is under the age of 35 and they try to run for the office of the president, 
that are automatically disqualified, just like if someone tries to run for the office of the president and they're not, they were not born in the United States, they're disqualified. Well, this is the same thing. So no criminal trial is necessary. However, Congress concluded in a January 6th investigation that Donald Trump did engage in insurrection when impeached for it. The Colorado Supreme Court also concluded that Donald Trump engaged in insurrection and disqualified him under the 14th Amendment Section 3, which Donald Trump promptly appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States. They're currently, they're currently looking at that case now. The main Secretary of State also disqualified Donald Trump under the 14th Amendment, Section 3. This is not a case about states' rights, because Donald Trump disqualified himself by trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election. And he tried to overthrow the United States government by insurrection and giving aid and comfort to the enemy. The states are only forcing the 14th Amendment, Section 3, in accordance with the Enforcement Act of 1870, which is also known as the Civil Rights Act. The 14th Amendment, Section 3 of the United States Constitution, and what is removing Donald Trump from the ballot, not the states. Has anyone ever been removed under the 14th Amendment, Section 3? Yes. Thousands of individuals have, including Alexander Stevens, the former Vice President of the Confederate States of America, who after the Civil War was blocked from taking his seat in the Senate. And very recently, in 2020, Ontario County, Min County Commissioner Coy Griffin was removed from his office and banned from ever seeking or holding any public office in the United States because of his role on January 6th at the U.S. Capitol. Why hasn't the Supreme Court ever stepped in before when all these individuals were removed under the 14th Amendment, Section 3? It's because Donald Trump is a high-profile figure, a former president of the United States who appealed this to the Supreme Court, and they agreed to hear it. Three justices here in the case were appointed by Donald Trump himself, and one of the justices' wife was one of the individuals that tried to overthrow the 2020 presidential election. Is the President of the United States an officer of the United States? Yes, the President is an officer of the United States. An officer of the United States are individuals in the executive and judicial branches of the federal government of the United States who exercise significant authority pursuant to the laws of the United States. It's not a title, but classification for certain types of official. This includes the President, Vice President, Supreme Court Justices, as well as other executive and judicial offices, all of whom must take an oath before they can hold these offices. In Buckley v. Bailo, 1976 case, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that officers of the United States are those persons exercising the significant authority pursuant to laws of the United States. Why is a presidential oath different from the federal oath? It's because the president is elected by the people. That's why his oath is different. That was the 14th Amendment, Section 3, enforced. The 14th, 15th, and 16th Amendments are all enforced under the Enforcement Act of 1870, also known as the Civil Rights Act. What is the Enforcement Act of 1870? It's a federal law that protects voters' rights and punishes those who try to take those rights away. It also gives authority to enforce the 14th, 15th, and 16th Amendments. Who can overturn the 14th Amendment, Section 3? Only Congress can, and only by a vote of two-thirds of each House can overturn the 14th Amendment, Section 3. To sum up the 14th Amendment, Section 3, if one takes an oath to the Constitution, and then breaks the oath by trying to overthrow the government by acts of insurrection, rebellion, or giving aid and comfort to the enemy, they are no longer able to run or hold any civil or military office in the United States. This includes running for or holding the office of the President of the United States, unless both houses of Congress deem it so by a two-thirds vote. The Constitution is the highest law of the land. I leave you with this quote from one of our forefathers, George Washington, who said, The unity of government would constitute you. One people is the main pillar in the evidence of your real independence, your support of your tranquility at home, your peace abroad, of your safety, of your prosperity, of that very liberty which you so highly prize. George Washington. Well, I hope I answered some of your questions about the 14th Amendment. Thank you for watching.